Good morning everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Um, today I'm going to show you how I make my turtles. Um, I have a special order for two small turtles. So I have these little guys here. I don't have a camera person today, so bear with me. I rigged up my phone, so we'll see how it works. Alright, so I made these two turtles. They're sugar spoons and I just lightly polished them. Um, I didn't even do anything to the back. I just just cut it off. Same thing with this one. Just a light polish and I still have to fix the end there. I found some scrap pieces that were too short for rings. Um, I could have made a couple of these into hearts, but I needed feet for the turtles, so that's what they're going to be. All the way down. These pieces, I was going to make earrings, but the turtles' feet should work out well for those. So those are my projects. I'm going to walk you through one. We're going to do, uh, let's see, this guy first. So I'll put all of this to the side. So whenever I hammer them out, I don't really hammer, I don't hammer them flat. Um, bump you over here. So you can see the bend that it still has in it. And that's about all the pounding I do for it. I'm just flattening it out. So if you can see that. Um, so we'll take you some background here. Just gonna round off the edge of the tail. Just taking brought that out. Let's turn on one more light. <laughs> this room is completely filled full of lights. Alright. So what I need to do now bump over here. is I need to get my feet positioned so that I can mark them. So everything's in frame. Okay. Those are my lines. All right. So I have two that are the same. So let's put those guys up front. And what I try and do is put them in a fashion to where I can see how they're going to sit, how I want the feet to sit. Can you kind of see the turtle coming together? Again, sorry about the shakiness. So I'm trying to get the turtle legs to sit right. So those are pretty long, so let's just work on the back legs right now. I know that they need to be somewhere in there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but...
just got them just enough to wear. <clears throat> Excuse me, this one's annoying me. Okay. There we go. So now we got our little feet. Now generally, I'll have all four of these guys in there, and then I'll use a clamp. marker now get you out to the side here a little bit and I mark the side oh, that one's not down let's get this one pen's not working that a fail <laughs> so I know I want that about there another dead sharpie who's next okay so now you can see I have my lines on there you can't really see this one but it's on there what I'm gonna do is give myself about this much room because we have a good size we have a good size border here so we can actually have a good chunk of the silverware on there so what I'm thinking or what I'm gonna do is generally I'll leave myself like a pencil width and so that means I'm gonna cut it right about here and I try and cut it in the same angle as my line just make sure it's all the way back bring you guys back here Just put it in the press it's just so much easier so there's my little foot one little foot those little ones are harder to break off there we go okay Grab a bucket. <clears throat> All right, so now we need to work on the front legs. And we're going to do the same process. Let's get our back legs out here. And I try and keep my legs that are going in a certain spot on that same side. So take these guys and we're gonna do the same thing just gonna do one at a time we'll get out the big sharpie I like that right there Oh, 
All right, so <clears throat> we have our two pieces. They look to be about the same length. Okay, so now we'll just clip those guys. Again, I want to do the same angle. Give myself about a pencil width. I'm feeling weak today. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So you are right here, front. This guy. Come on. There we go. All right. Everything has a place, everything in its place. Okay. I'll come back over here. I'd like to get you. Okay. So now we have our feet. That guy, this guy, that guy. They'll get in place eventually. Okay, so there we pretty much have our turtle. Minus a head. I forgot a head. <coughs> Grabbing my box of pieces here. I don't know if you can see that. This is just a bunch of random pieces that I keep. Because I won't throw or get rid of anything. Don't think I have enough to solder. Um, I've about exhausted all of my little tiny pieces. This guy work. There we go. We got ourselves a head. A turtle needs a head. Don't let anybody tell you different. I'll put you back here for a second. These longer pieces will go back into my drawer of pieces. So now I need to prep these little guys. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do that with my saw or my uh, grinder here. <clears throat> and I'm just taking off the edge and the corners.
always <coughs> excuse me. I am always trying to <coughs> break it. A little bigger base there. I am always feeling everything so that there's no sharp edges because I am making jewelry and things that people could wear. Um, all right, so we got our head, our legs, and our shell. All right, so um, first I want to put on a jump ring because um, the customers want these as um, pendants. Just do one for now. These are 10 millimeter jump rings that I have. They're 10 millimeter stainless steel jump rings. What I do is I take let me see if I can get that for you. Take and I keep them, I put them straight so they're flush. And then I'll take my pliers and right over that seam, I'll get about to here. And I'll flatten that out really quick. And that leaves me with a nice flat edge. So let me set you up for um, the table here. Excuse the shakiness. Put you. Okay. I think. All right. I think that's a good angle. We'll find out, and we'll know for next time. Okay, what can you see? Okay, so <clears throat> um this is just a fire brick from, um, from Lowe's. I just cut it in half. And then I got this uh, ceramic one that I obviously broke. Um, for this, I'm using, uh, for the jump rings, the rosin core stuff. It, I haven't been able to get it to do what I want, wrapping around the jump ring. So I've been using this stuff for three years now. Um, it works great. I flatten it out with a hammer and then I'll take and I'll cut off a piece, maybe a quarter inch. And I'll take this guy and I'll fold it right over to where it makes kind of a teepee. I'll take this magnet. This is just a magnet out of a computer. You can use anything really. I use it just as a stabilizer um, to stabilize my uh, jump ring. And this is a set of hemostats. Um, 
They are about five inches. And these were curved. I ended up burning off most of the, uh, the tip. But I used them just to hold on to my jump ring. So we're going to take, this is the head. I want this side up because I'm going to put an eye on both sides of that. It looks, looks kind of neat. So underneath, I need to do, I'm using this soldering paste flux. Um, it's just what I had when I started. Put a little bit on there. I'll take my jump ring and put a little bit on it. And it's probably way overkill, but I want it. It just seems to work for me. So if it works, use it. So what the magnet is doing right now is it's pulling down on this. So I can't really move this right now. It's keeping it nice and solid. That allows me to center it up on here. Next I'll take this guy and I'll put him in. There we go. So we got our TP on there. I'll take my torch. This is my little mini torch. I think it just filled it up. But it was like it was getting low on me. There we go. All right. Just make sure that you can see all this. I'm heating up the whole piece. You don't really want to melt your solder. You want to let your let the piece itself get really hot so it can melt the solder. And I've got my little spray bottle here because as soon as that drops that is it so once that solder dropped let me just double check this nope didn't take so need another piece of solder just a tiny bit on the other side that didn't go so I'm just going to use a tiny piece of solder here just to try and bridge that that gap from your angle this looks okay but it's the back side that just missed Get this nice and hot again. There we go. Spray water, quick. All right. That in my bucket of water. This guy back on a stand. So now this guy's solid all the way across. All right. And a 
it's really stuck on there. Looks pretty clean. Just gonna take and buff up the back side because this needs to be clean for my next solder. Okay. So now we got So I went through before and I buffed this guy out on the inside. So now we're going to take this guy, we're going to get him in here, try and get him center. So for this stuff, I'll use the rosin core. So the rest of this will be the, uh, the lighter stuff. And where did... up here okay so I'll cut a piece that's about the size what's going on here and now I've got my big guys these are my big forceps I've taken and ground down the teeth so they're still there but they're not really enough to really leave a lot of marks and I also ground out the edges so it's nice and smooth the less marks that we have to take care of later the better these guys are 8 inch curved hemostats trying to do is just get that on the inside now I want to check that the head is straight and that I have enough underneath to make a good bond so that looks pretty good take this guy balanced in here. There we go. So, again, what we're looking for is <clears throat> I want to see movement as this, as the solder melts, it's going to draw it together. Um, And the other, the nice part about using that other solder is it has a lot higher melting temp. So I'm able to do this without messing up my ring, generally. <laughs> there we go. that in the water real quick so you can see in the head I have a nice clean edge here and I have solder going around the back so this is a good bond what I have to do now is I want to get this head kind of pulled up while I still can. Let's see if I break this here. Hmm.
nothing like testing the, the solder. Let's see, how can I get that? I just need a little bit. One thing for sure, we have a good solder weld. Hmm. Let me try something here. to kill my jump ring. <laughs> so let's get that out of there. And we get this bent where I want it. So we have a good bend now. Now I gotta put my jump ring back in. Sorry about that. But that's how things things work out. Just make sure I got you still here. Okay. So here's my trick for getting rid of solder. cinched down because that the other weld is going to come undone because this stuff is so much hotter might actually be easier just to start over so the solder just melted just going to wipe it all away take that off. that was hot.
do, do, do. Piece of solder here. So get that back in there. Sorry about having to redo this again. But sometimes it's what it takes. Every single piece is different. All right, let's get this guy on here. So again, getting the whole piece hot. Let me zoom in. Just a touch more. I'll see if I can sync these up. Just got a phone call. All right, so we're back to soldering. Our little piece. Um, we got that on there. Got my water. All right, so again, heat up the whole thing. cool for a second. I have accidentally taken them out. Okay, I went the right way. Taking them, tried to take it off too fast and the solder hadn't set yet. So we got our jump ring back on there. Still looks pretty good. Mr. Turtle here. I'm just wiping him off from the water. And I know we already have solder on there, but I'm gonna put just a little bit more just up towards the front. So I wanna make sure that front has enough solder on it. Again, got my line. We want to get this guy on there. Make sure it's even and in the right spot. So it looks like we need to come over just a little bit. That looks good. Get our other stats on there. Some more nice solder.
head off. So searching for movement. Want to watch it move. See that movement right there? There we go. And I always give it another second or two whenever I'm uh, soldering because sometimes all the solder doesn't doesn't uh, melt with that first movement so I was trying not to make this a super long video but so now we have something hangable so on to the next one. These guys should be a little bit easier. Let me just buff this mark up. This guy is my right leg. So what I found out I could do with this rosin core stuff is I can take my pliers and actually crimp it down like that. It makes things so much easier. It's about the size of the piece I need. We'll get one more. Actually, we'll get rest of these set up should be pretty good okay so this guy goes on this side yeah definitely this side you always want their feet sweeping back a little bit. And I always test fit everything just to make sure it all looks okay. So I'm going to sweep that back just a little bit more. I'm going to break out my third hand because generally this is fairly easy, but this is just annoying right now. Make sure you can see that. Okay. So the third hand is basically just couple of clips hold your work in place okay again looking for movement
be pretty close. Oh, you know what? I have a problem. The piece is bent. I don't know if you can see that or not. So, it's not sitting flush. So, that is not going to solder. So, let's fix that. Just make the rest sure the rest of them are flat. That should be okay. No, it should be okay. All right, let's try this again. So I can see that it is flush there now. I'm going to turn the work towards me a little bit. See if we can get our movement back. So I got dropped there, but I need a little bit more solder. Try and get it hot enough to where the solder will melt as soon as I touch it. Water. So again, we can see we got our solder line there, and I have a line all the way around. That's on there pretty good. All right, dry it off. Clean my spot for my next leg. Should be a little bit faster now.
Sorry about the silence. Just a look to see how that looks. I think it looks pretty close. Move it down a little bit. That's right. We'll call it good there. Put it in our third hand. zoomed in here. Getting the piece hot again. Everything is wanting to move on me today. That one I kind of messed up on. When I touched it, it was a little too much, but we can fix that. Cleaning it off for the back legs. So because these are small, I've noticed all of this is heating up a lot. So I'm going to do both back legs at the same time. Always check to make sure everything is where I want it. Is that guy's good? Double check that to make sure our legs look good. One looks weird. We don't want weird legs. There we go. I like that.
so much fun. Nothing wants to work. I know, I'm not alone. The struggle is real. Let's try it there. Second one. Probably gonna have to add a little bit to this because my solder's off. Just have it, folks. All right, so minus the little touch up work I'll have to do here, we got ourselves a little turtle. This guy is it's about three and a half inches long and it's about two and a quarter to, yeah, two and a quarter inches wide. And then it does have the piece for necklace. If you're wondering how it will hang, Thanks for bearing with me through that process. The rest is just cleanup work. Um, I'll use my uh, sanding drum to get down through most of this stuff here. And then I'll go to my bristle brushes to finish cleaning it up so it looks, uh, looks all the same. And I'll get everything final polished, uh, well, rough polish, toss it in the tumbler, come out and I'll put two little eyes on it and I'll get it all polished up. I'll have pictures up later. Thanks for joining me. Have fun.